you're struggling to learn art, but you really want to be better. You want to be Sam Does Art, or Lowish, or Ergo Josh, or any other person that you look up to on Instagram, but you don't know what you're doing. You've stalled, or you don't know where to start, and you're afraid that you've peaked. You're afraid to get that course because you're not sure if it'll pay off. You're not sure what to do next. You're paralyzed by choice. There's too many things to learn and you don't know where to go. You're an artist. You need to gamify how you're learning art to level up your skills. There are four ways that games trick us into playing them and enjoying them and consuming them for hours on end. And we can use those tactics to make learning anything, but specifically art, engaging and achievable objectives. Often in art learning videos, you're gonna to be told, you need to learn the fundamentals. But what are the fundamentals? How do you learn them? And video games have a roadmap for how things are done. You get a quest, you finish that quest, you get a new quest. Each quest is broken down into manageable tasks. And those tasks have waypoints. You can see them on your map. You can see where you need to go. You can see exactly what you need to do at any given step of that quest. You don't have the same clarity with life. But you can create your own road map. You can create waypoints for you to check in at. And looking at different courses and the free things that they offer are often the basics. So I would encourage you to look at things like Proco and look over their free resources, look at ArtWAD, look at New Masters Academy, anything that offers art training and see what they are doing, how are they are breaking things down. This will give you a roadmap because these are professionals who have learned and who've made progress to the point that they're at now. And they have the tools to show you what you need to do. Objectives in video games are much faster to complete than anything in real life. So be patient when you are completing these objectives, when you are drawing boxes, when you are drawing spheres, when you are trying to learn how to simplify figures into mannequins, when you are learning how to put things into perspective when you are learning how to build drawings. Your brain has to catch up. Your muscles have to catch up. So you have to be patient. It will take a lot of time, but you will see progress if you follow a roadmap and you stick to it. If you aren't committing to a plan, you aren't going to succeed. You need to slow down analyze the steps that you are taking and commit to them that means longer than a month longer than two months you have to continually do these tasks to drill those fundamentals make sure that you are always learning something new and you're challenging yourself something doesn't click keep doing it just keep doing it the repetition of boxes, the repetition of figures and mannequins will make you understand things. Follow the roadmap and you will get there. Video games have a much lower difficulty than anything in real life. You level up your skills a lot faster. You can spend five minutes crouching in a cave in Skyrim and level up your sneaking to like 20. But real life is not like that. And you need to lower the barrier of entry to doing anything related to any skill that you want to learn. Start with doing it for 15 minutes. You don't have the habit to do it regularly yet, but you will. Slowly increasing the frequency and the duration that you are doing things at will slowly build those skills and the habit of doing it. Having the habit and impulse to do the practice will make it easier, will make you better. 
but you need to be able to sit down and do that practice for an hour, two hours to get a lot of progress from a single session or multiple sessions. Risk in video games is all but nil. You die, you respawn. You might lose some gold or equipment or whatever, but you can easily recoup that. You don't feel the pain of being stabbed, dying, falling off a cliff, being rocketed into a sky by a giant swinging a, a maul at you. You don't feel those things. But in real life, you can feel pain. Emotional, physical, financial pain. And there are risks with being an artist associated with these things. A lot of emotional pain, feelings of inadequacy, feeling down, bad, uh, comparing yourself to other people, financial costs of opening your own shop, having your own business. These things are real fears, real risks. These risks have greater rewards than anything else because they have actual tangible rewards. You're not just getting armor or a new skin for your gun or anything like that. You're not getting something that's meaningless. You're getting tangible, significant rewards. And these rewards can be things like a new skill that you're proud of, that you feel accomplished in. It can be financial having a successful shop update. It can be financial, having a successful shop update or selling your first painting or getting into a gallery or whatever you want to accomplish. You don't see making art, investing in your tools, your pencils, your brushes, your paints, your canvases as a waste because for you, you are building something, whether that is a business or an identity, you're building something for yourself. That is the reward that you get from doing art, is a sense of accomplishment, an identity, purpose. It doesn't always have to work out, and it doesn't always have to be what the world deems as successful. You're an artist and you're making something meaningful for you and for the people you share it with. So go make something meaningful.